supposed to be deciding the fate of abortion access in a matter of like minutes, potentially giving voters the right to decide. Do you believe that voters should be able to vote on this measure of abortion access? So when you, anytime you file those amendments, uh, you know, there's certain uh, rules that you have to follow, and I know there's been a lot of litigation over that. It's not been something I've been a party to, but our attorney general, I think, has handled that very ably, uh, and I think that she's made arguments that have been, been very compelling. So, so we'll have to see uh, what ends up happening, and then, uh, and then we'll go from there. Yes, so, sir. Uh, you've had a lot of victories lately that you pointed out that the Babylon Bee even uh, ran a satire article that went viral saying that you had been kicked out of the Republican Party for having too many victories. So my question, my question is, is um, has anybody in the Republican Party reached out to you? Because um, they seem to have some problems having these legal victories. And uh, what uh, advice would you give to them? Well, well, look, I mean, you know, it's interesting. This congr You look at what's happening in D.C. Uh, Republicans have gotten nothing done up there. Um, but if it wasn't for Florida, we added four Republicans in 22 to our congressional delegation. Democrats would have the House right now uh, if it wasn't for Florida. That's just a fact. Uh, that would be the case. So we've done, I think, everything that we could do in Florida to put points on the board. We Obviously, you see the party expanded. Heck, we have a, Republicans getting elected in various parts of Broward, which people didn't think were possible. Uh, you look at Miami-Dade, what happened in 22 there. So this state has moved, I think, in the direction that, that, that Republicans have wanted to see all states move. And we're really the model about how you get that done. That is not necessarily something that I think has been replicated in other states. I think other states have actually tried to go about it in a different way. And they're, they're free to do that. But, but, but our model obviously works, and, and what it works is, is it's not based on, oh, yes, we're doing you know, this, this uh, uh, lever of the party, or we're trying to do this uh, voter registration drive. Like, I'm not saying that doesn't matter, but our movement here in Florida has been driven by results, and it's been driven by doing things that people want to see done. I mean, just yesterday I signed a bill to say, you know, if someone takes over your house, like if you're gone for summer vacation, they take over your house, you show up, you get the sheriff to kick them out. They don't get to assert rights against you. I mean, what world are we living in where you're incentivizing that behavior? So this is just common sense. Uh, a lot of stuff that we've done over the years has just been common sense. So I, I just think it's rooted in, in success and delivering results. And when you tell people you're going to do something, then do it. And sometimes I'll get asked questions, oh, you know, what about this, what about that? And if I don't think I can get it done, I don't make a promise uh, on things. If I, if I know I can get it done, then I'll say, here's what I'm going to do. And then I go and say, OK, I made that promise. I got to do. I look in Washington. All these guys ran saying, the we have so much debt. The government's spending too much money. And then what have they done? They just turned around. They did a massive spending increase uh, that's going to add more to the debt. It's not going to help with inflation. It's funding all of Biden's open border policies. So I think that's bad in of itself. But what happens is when you govern in a way that's contrary to how you campaigned and what you told the voters you're due, that creates dissatisfaction. And I think that there's a lot of that with Republican voters across the country right now. I think Florida is one of the exceptions. And there's been other states you know, that, have done, that have done good things. But I think we've been the leader um, on all this stuff. So, so just produce results. That's really the way that, that you do. And we were talking about some of the business and all this other stuff. Um, our, I mean, California has the highest unemployment rate in the country. They should have the lowest. They have such a, I mean, it's a naturally beautiful state, the wine industry, all these other things. But we have the lowest unemployment rate amongst large states. Um, I mean, Miami, Dade, it's like, it's like as low as it's probably ever been. I mean, it's, it, but that is as a result of, of having good policies. And oh, by the way, in the most recent budget, which I haven't signed yet, but we will over the next couple months, uh, we have another $500 million dedicated to accelerated debt repayment for the state's debt. So as Washington's adding more to the debt, not only are we reducing our debt in Florida, we're accelerating the repayment to where we're able to purchase some of these bonds on the open market at, at, at reduced prices, essentially. Uh, and so we have the lowest per capita debt in the entire United States of America amongst all 50 states. Uh, that is success. That's people see that and they know, yeah, you guys don't have an income tax, 
which is great, but there would never be a need to have an income tax here because we're not like Illinois where you're a fiscal basket case and you have all these unfunded liabilities and you're running up a lot of debt.